Hi guys, this is Julia, and it is Windows 10's four-year anniversary, which Windows 10 originally came out on July 29th, 2015, and it is July 29th, 2019. Now I am recording this audio a day late, as I actually was trying to record a video yesterday and didn't go as planned, so I've decided to redo the video and just use screenshots instead of the live demos because I don't want to make this video super long and I want to keep it brief and just sum up pretty much the most important things. So Windows 10 has been out for four years. Yeah, I know it's crazy. And you guys are seeing an overlay. I'm just gonna overlay the thumbnail and then have screenshots show over it when I'm going to be talking about certain things in the different versions. So I'm gonna spend about a minute on each version, explain the main features of it, my opinions and how I felt about it, you know, my honest opinions on each version and my favorite features. And so that's how this video is gonna go. So let's get started. All right, so the very first version of Windows 10, which is Windows 10 RTM, build 10240, version 1507, threshold one, TH1. It was released to insiders on July 15th of 2015 and then released to the public on July 29th, 2015, which started the free upgrade for Windows 10 for the first year. Now, the thing about RTM is I upgraded from Windows 7 to, R to 10 RTM and I did not have any colored title bars as they removed it in RTM for some reason, which that was in Windows 7, 8, and 8.1, and then it's like you upgrade to 10 and they were gone. That was like the one thing I didn't like. I also experienced a lot of crashes and bugs, but later on with the later cumulative updates, things got better over time. RTM lost support in May 2017, however, it can go up to the July 2017 patch. If you're on LTSB, RTM is still supported until 2025. So pretty much, that's my opinion on RTM. You know, it was lacking a lot of features. It got more stable later on. It was unstable at first. So pretty much I wouldn't recommend using it as it's just, in my opinion, I prefer the newer versions over RTM, so yeah. So now we're gonna be talking about the second version of Windows 10, which is the Windows 10 November update. It was build 10586 version 1511, threshold to TH2. And the thing I was really happy about was NU added back the colored title bars. Now I was very happy to see that because those I really needed. They also fixed the settings icon, also the first version to start taking seven and 8.1 keys for upgrade. Now, it was pulled for a couple days in November within the first week due to an issue, but it was only pulled on the MCT, but then they fixed it shortly after. I was actually affected by that, fun fact. And you started the dot numbers, which I was very happy about, because that way you could actually see what update you were on. They started actually opening up a change log around that time to where you could see what was in each update. November update did lose support October 10th, 2017, fully lost support April 10th, 2018, and is the only version no longer in, in support because all the other versions have some sort of enterprise or they're still supported in general. Now with NU, it looked pretty much just like RTM, just ha had colored title bars and fixed a lot of bugs. Now weird for me is I actually had a lot of issues with NU but some other people didn't, so maybe it's just me. There were times I didn't have issues, but later on I had issues. But anyways, NU was what RTM should have been when it first came out. I just wish it was a little more stable for me. But anyways, that is NU. So now we're gonna be talking about the third version of Windows 10, which is the Windows 10 Anniversary Update. It was version 1607, build 14393. It was the first to start the Redstone builds, so it was Redstone 1, RS1 and it was a massive difference to Windows 10. It was released August 2nd of 2016. It was gonna be released on July 29th, 2016, but they ran a couple days late, and it was called the Anniversary Update because it was Windows 10's first anniversary, which means they pretty much revamped the entire thing. They redesigned the settings and the start menu. They added a dark mode. They moved the action center from the left to the right. They they redesigned the updating screen to where it said working on updates instead of updating windows or upgrading windows. And as well as added Windows Ink, which is a new feature. They also added the Windows subsystem for Linux, which was really cool for Linux users to be able to use Linux things on Windows. And overall, AU was a massive improvement. It had a lot of cool new features. It was stable for me. I had no issues with it. It is still supported for LTSB, which is cool, but the version completely lost support for Home and Pro on April 10th of 2018. So that is kind of sad, but for me, I had very good experiences with AU, so that's AU. 
So now we're going to talk about the fourth version of Windows 10, which is the Windows 10 Creators Update, version 1703, build 15063, Redstone 2, RS2. It was released April 11th, 2017, but people could start downloading it on April 5th through the Media Creation Tool or Update Assistant. It was called the Creators Update because it added some features that were pretty creative. It added Paint 3D, it added custom colors on personalization, it added a nightlight feature which made it easier on your eyes at night, it added a new game mode, and also the update had a redesigned Windows Defender, completely redesigned. It also, this update was a lot about privacy because it, you would have to choose your privacy settings before you could even update, but if you updated through the MCT or Update Assistant, it would have you do it after. It did lose support October 9th, 2018, but I believe it's still supported on Enterprise. And for me, Creator's Update was honestly very stable. I didn't have any issues with it. It added a couple more features that AU didn't have, and overall was a very solid update, and I liked it, and the features were great. So that is CU. Alright, so we're going to be talking about the fifth version of Windows 10, which is the Windows 10 Fall Creators Update, version 1709, build 16299, Redstone 3, RS3. Now, it wasn't too different from CU. It was released on October 17th of 2017. The one thing noticing easiest is the people icon on the taskbar. That was like the one thing I noticed about it. They added the GPU in the task manager. They started fluent design in FCU. They also have the white Cortana box if you had light theme enabled. And also they did remove syskey because of tech support scammers locking people out of their machines. So it's a good thing they removed that. They also introduced the Microsoft Store starting in FCU. Now it didn't come with it. It was introduced during the FCU days. Now in my opinion, FCU was a little buggy at first. Then it got better because I know that when I first, because I know when I first upgraded to FCU, I had Classic Shell installed and then it bricked and I had to roll back because Explore kept crashing. So if you're going to ever upgrade, if you ever have like a VM and you try to upgrade it to the Fall Creators update, just be sure you do not have Classic Shell or Open Shell installed or it most likely will brick. And also, I didn't like how in this PC, the scaling looked skinnier and because of my font size and my font, it, I wouldn't be able to read my space half the time that I had left on my C drive and also because I renamed the drive and they did improve it in RS4 and then RS5 they had completely fixed it. So FCU wasn't my favorite version. It was alright. I mean, and it did lose support in April 2019, so just lost support like a couple months ago. So anyways, that is Windows 10 FCU. So another thing I wanted to say about FCU real fast is that I had it about a year ago in one of my challenges, and honestly, it was actually pretty stable for me and I had no issues with it, but I was also on a later cumulative update. The only issue I had is when it updated to RS4 and bricked because of the custom theme patcher, but I mean, later on it actually did get better. The sixth version of Windows 10 is known as the Windows 10 April 2018 update. It was version 1803, build 17134, Redstone 4, RS4, and it was released April 30th of 2018, which is the last day of April, so I kind of find it funny how they called it the April 2018 update and released it on the last day of April, but oh well. It introduced some new features like a new task view icon, which is also part of timeline, which is the reason why it changed, which would see like the last things you did and stuff. They redesigned the settings app and they made it more fluent, so now it's using more of that fluent design in RS4. They added a fonts thing in settings, and it also introduced mixed reality, which I never used, but in my opinion, RS4 was actually a very stable update. I had like no issues with it other than when it first came out, Windows Defender would be red for no reason, but in a later cumulative update they did fix that. Now fun fact, even though RS4 came out April 30th, they did a rollout through Windows Update starting on May 8th, so you wouldn't necessarily get the update right away until then unless you forced it. So. With RS4 though, I'm gonna have to say it was the one that actually pretty much the design that all the future versions for now use, like RS4, RS5, and 19H1 pretty much use a very similar design. There's not too much difference between all three. So FCU to RS4 was definitely a change. So RS4 was very stable like CU and AU, and it was a very good build. It is still in support until October of 2019. So that is RS4. 
So now we're going to talk about the 7th version of Windows 10, which is the Windows 10 October 2018 update, version 1809, build 17763, Redstone 5, RS5. It was originally released on October 2nd of 2018, got pulled days later due to it deleting people's files who had linked folders. It later got re-released on November 13th, and the reason why it was so late is because they had some other issue with zip files, but anyways... RS5 introduced some features such as Snip and Sketch, Dark File Explorer, the Your Phone app, Clipboard History, which is cool because you could see what things you've copied in the past, and it wasn't too much different from RS4. Now, because they had to re-release it, they weren't pushing it out to everyone on 1803 like they really were before, and even sometimes when you'd click check for updates, it wouldn't even come up. In fact, there's still some people that are on 1803 because they're not really forcing RS5 because of all the issues it had, and especially with deleting people's files. Now, I didn't have that many issues with RS5. I never got the file deletion bug, but I feel bad for the people that did get that file deletion bug because I know someone lost practically all their data because of it. Now, that's pretty messed up because this bug was reported to insiders way before it was even released, but in my opinion, I just... I don't really like RS5 that much. I prefer 19H1 because it never had a file deletion bug. And I mean, I guess the features in RS5 were cool that they released, especially the Dark File Explorer being my favorite because it matches a lot better. But anyways, that is RS5. So now I'm going to be talking about the 8th version of Windows 10, which is the latest version of Windows 10 as of recording this video right now, which is the Windows 10 May 2019 update. It is version 1903, build 18362, and it is just 19H1. They have stopped the redstone builds. Now it did introduce some new features, such as a new light theme, which looks really nice, although you can't change the color of it on the taskbar, it's just going to be that color. They also redid the start menu if you do a fresh install of 19H1 and they made it look cleaner and it's not as bloaty and it looks better. They also made the login screen blurred. Now if you don't want it blurred, you could disable transparency, but then again, if you want transparency, I believe when Arrow Tweaker has an option to disable the blurred login screen without disabling transparency. Now a big feature of 19H1 is Windows Sandbox, which is a, basically a place where you could test applications that you're not sure are safe and you don't want to run them on your main machine. I did do a video on that, which is also a real, really useful. Also a really useful feature, like for example since I have a Surface, is that you can now adjust the brightness in the Action Center, which is nice. Now they did do a couple things with the taskbar with some icons. They did add a new mic icon to where you can tell if something's using your microphone or not, which I guess can be useful. They also added a Windows Update icon, which I believe if it's yellow, it means it's requiring a restart and it'll show on your taskbar, although it may jump in your tray, so you may want to click the arrow to see if it's there and drag it out, so that way you know if you see that icon, it's needing a restart for an update. And also, they changed the network icon, so if there's no internet connection, it's now a globe. Now, I kind of actually preferred the old one, but, you know, a change is a change. And also, the File Explorer icon does look a little darker now compared to before. Now, also, if you're updating to 19H1, which I highly recommend you guys update to 19H1, you could do it through Windows Update or the Update Assistant or through the Media Creation Tool or through an ISO, which if you update through the MCT or ISO, you will notice they changed the setup. It now is a light theme setup and it looks different, so I guess that's one way to tell if you're running a 19H1 or later Windows setup. So they also have Search and Cortana separated, although I just hid the Cortana and kept the search box. So anyways though, pretty much 19H1 is the latest version. It's a very good update. I highly recommend it. If you guys do not have it, you should get it. It's better than 1809 in my opinion. It's very stable. I've never had any issues with 19H1. And the fact it's been out for a couple months now, it is safe to update. So if you're still on 1803 because you're one of those people that doesn't like to update right away, well, I'm going to have to tell you they pretty much have fixed every single bug now that was very serious. So it is safe to update. So, also keep in mind if you're on 19H1, they do have additional updates they release later in the month and there will be this additional update section, which in the, in the recent additional update, which is .267, they did add a ton of bug fixes and some of them were important because it fixed like Windows Hello, which is like if you use that um, for the face recognition, they did fix it from it not working sometimes, but pretty much with those updates they fixed stuff. So anyways, 
I recommend getting 19H1 if you haven't already. So that is 19H1. Alright guys, so I'm going to wrap up this video by saying happy 4th birthday Windows 10. It's crazy how it's been out for so long, which because it's been out so long, I kind of wish they released a whole new version of Windows altogether, which I have a feeling that 20H1 is going to be a whole new version because they're going to be releasing 19H2 within the next months, which is very similar to 19H1, but it's going to add on features. It's kind of like a service pack because they'll be doing it within a cumulative update. However, right now, 19H2 does not add any new features, so I'm guessing they're going to be doing it later on, or we'll be noticing within the next months as they've been updating it through the Insider program on the slow ring. We'll see some differences. But anyways, leave in the comments down below what your guys' favorite features of Windows 10 are, and what your favorite version is. And also guys, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Now I did make a video last year of Windows 10's third birthday, and that video was more like a time lapse of upgrading through every version while talking about it, and I did explain a little bit more details on some of the things. As in this video, I said most of the things I said, however, I only said like the more major important things or major differences that people noticed. Now I may have left a couple things out, I'm sorry about that, but you guys can go and watch last year's. I'll leave a link in the description so if you want to check that one out as well you can so anyways thanks for watching guys it's crazy it's been four years and i'll be doing something different for the fifth anniversary which you guys will see in a year so also keep in mind that we'll have big announcements coming soon so keep watching anyways thanks for watching guys and bye bye for now